All right, folks. Today's talk will be, uh, well, it'll be certain mathematical trickery. Uh, but today we're going to talk about spectrum painting. Basically, how have we been putting uh, images in the spectrum? And today it's going to be uh, a little bit mathematical talk and talk about how it's done. And uh, really what's going on is uh, OFDM is the math we're using. Basically, we're using the IFFT and FFT, um, which is used everywhere in uh, Wi-Fi and LG systems. And that didn't click. Okay, there it goes. Just to remind everyone what we're talking about, there's the uh, SDR software, and there's the waterfall, and there you see the uh, image someone drew in the spectrum. So today we're going to give a, uh, a rather detailed talk of how exactly uh, do you do that and what's going on. Well, you first have to start with the picture. <laughs> and the uh, picture has to be some digital picture that you uh, drew in Microsoft Paint or got off the internet, whatever. And the uh, picture is going to have so many... Uh, pixels for the width and so many pixels for the height. And the idea that you have to think about is how long is it going to take to transmit that picture. And the equation at the bottom there is what shows us that. Simply the product of the height pixels times the width pixels divided by your IQ sample rate will be your transmit time. So ideally you want that to work out to be around 10, 12 seconds uh, if the transmit time works out to be four hours, you're not going to see the picture too well. <laughs> All right, so here's a simple idea of how we would do the picture shown here. Uh, we simply want a line, and we want it to last for 10 seconds. Well, that's quite simple. We just turn our signal generator on, and there you see the line. So the x-axis is frequency, the y-axis is time. It's the basic uh, waterfall display that you see in your SDR software. And for those of us trying to do that with a IQ modulator, if we have the LO at 915 megahertz, we simply would add a positive phaser of 1 megahertz, and there you would see the tone at 916. Very simple. And if you now wanted the tone to be uh, 1 megahertz below, you would do this. You would make it a negative 1 megahertz phaser, and if your LO is at 915, you would see this signal at 914. So, so far this has been a very, very boring picture. So, let's move away from a single, simple tone, because anyone can do that. And now let's say, how would we make a picture uh, that's 920 pixels wide and 880 pixels uh, in height? And we want to make that come out on the waterfall. And we'll pick an IQ sample rate of 250 kilohertz. So we kind of list the steps here. First, we have to somehow convert this picture into IQ data. Uh, we need a tool that can read in the image, convert the image to a grayscale or black and white image. And essentially what we have to do is we have to convert every single uh, row into different sine waves of different intensities. And said differently, we have to, gent we have to make 1920 individual sine waves that vary intensity 1080 times. So you can imagine building this in hardware uh, would be absolutely impossible and would be extremely complex. But in the age of DSP, you will see that this is rather trivial. Okay. The first thing we're going to either use uh, modern software, either MATLAB or GNU Octave, 
You can use Python as well, but they all have the basic tools needed to do this. And the first step is we need to read an image into these programs. And we're going to use the function image read. All that's going to do is convert the image into a matrix of numbers. Now we're ready to do the math on it. Once the image has been read, either in MATLAB or GNU, we have to convert that uh, matrix into a two-dimensional matrix or convert it to grayscale, said directly, and they have a function that's called RGB to gray, and that will convert the three-dimensional matrix into a two-dimensional matrix of just simply intensity. Now we're ready to start our process. Okay, this is the uh, <laughs> the whole equation here. So we're basically reading the image in. We convert the image to grayscale. We then convert the image to double precision. That allows us to uh, take the FFT and everything. Now, just the image itself is strictly magnitude. There's no phase information. And one of the problems when you just take the IFFT of a bunch of uh, stuff that has no phase is you don't really get a very nice signal. So one trick you can do is uh, multiply it by some complex phase and then do that product um, before you do the FFT. So let's walk through the uh, line. So the first line there, we read the in the image, but then we convert the image to grayscale we get a size of the image, so it says how many pixels are in the height, how many pixels are in the width. We create a random number generator of that same matrix dimensions. We can put that number into a essentially a complex phaser. Now we have IQ1. We take the image matrix, dot times it with the uh, random phase matrix, IQ2, that's really where we're converting the picture. Again, the picture is frequency. We're converting the picture into time. So we're taking the FFT in the second dimension, or said, said generically, we're taking the IFFT uh, on every um, row. Okay, and the FFT shift there is just to center it at DC. And then IQ4, we're reshaping that matrix uh, into a one-dimensional matrix. IQ5, we're scaling it, so it's magnitude 1, negative 1. And then it's simply IQ5, we save to either a binary file or a WAV file. And this is complex data, essentially I and Q data, that we would then simply feed to a IQ modulator. And when you transmitted that and looked at the SDR waterfall, you would see the image. So the green box is the big picture of what's going on mathematically. And just to say the blue text here, so we're converting the image rows into sine waves. And how we're doing that is the IFFT function. We're then adding random phase um, to each of them. So again, to do this in hardware, we are essentially creating 1920 individual sine waves that have their magnitudes varying uh, in relationship to the image intensity. So quite complex, and to do this in hardware, um, would be quite an undertaking. But this is essentially what OFDM is. Obviously, OFDM doesn't transmit images, but replace the matrix of the image with matrix of data that you're trying to transmit, and you would follow this very similar math. Maybe have to add a few pilot tones and things, but the block math functions of what we're doing here uh, is exactly what we do in OFDM. And just to prove to you that um, it really is an OFDM, 
So the green would be our data, our bits, whatever we want. In frequency, we have to then convert that to time. So we would take the IFFT and that would be your OFDM symbol. Uh, you could get into it, but you have to add that CP term, which stands for the cyclic prefix. That's to uh, handle multipath, really. Basically, you just take the last part of your symbol and put it up at the front. So on the receive side, they typically would not process the CP regions because that's where all the multipath merging is going to happen. So that's not where you'd want to take the FFT. But that's a bit in the weeds there but and here we see the typical spectrum of an OFDM waveform you see all the individual sine waves there each carrying their own uh, data so OFDM is really not anything new I think its original ideas were proposed back in the 1960s back then however it was kind of just left in academic circles because the hardware inf hardware to realize OFDM back then would have been extremely expensive. Like I said here, you'd have to generate 1920 different sine waves, add them all up, and transmit that. And in a hardware scheme, that would be rather uh, complex and insane. But with DSP, we can generate 1920 sine waves very easily by simply taking the IFFT. So that's why it's very common now. So here it's a classic uh, image in the waterfall. And you might say, well, why is there that line in the center of the image? And this is a problem. I've talked about this numerous times. This is a problem of analog IQ modulators what's called DC leakage. Essentially, the carrier oscillator is leaking out of the IQ modulator. So that's why you see that tone. Any real hardware of late is going to be using what's called a digital IQ modulator, which removes all of these types of problems. And uh, so this is the block diagram here of what's called an analog IQ modulator and analog IQ demodulator. And this is really bad stuff today because of leakage and IQ impairments. So if you see hardware that looks like this and someone's telling you it's the latest thing, I would <laughs> I would run away. <laughs> Cause you're gonna have IQ leakage. Um, you really want to have all this stuff before the DAC, like shown here. Uh, this is the new standard, and if you see a block diagram like this, then you should be impressed, because this is um, what's called a digital IQ. Essentially, all the complex modulation is done before the DAC, and there is no LO leakage. You have perfect quadrature, and everything is perfect textbook. This, by the way, is the architecture in the red bataya, or bataya, the red potato, um, which is why I've been such a fan of that little board, because it does all this functionality before the DAC. This is not the standard in the Hack RF, which is why it's a hack and low grade equipment. It's also not the standard in the USRP and the Blade RF. The Blade RF and the USRP all use this architecture, which is why you will always see carrier leakage, IQ, um, image suppression, not so good. But when you see a block diagram like this, you can expect very good signals. Now, obviously the trade-off here is the, uh, the DAC has to be running at a higher sample rate but it's very trivial, and we can do a video on that or two, to simply take the output of the red bataya and use some mixers to shift it up to VHF or UHF. That's, that's not a big deal. So anyway, hopefully you folks have learned something today about how to 
make images in the waterfall. So if you've seen this and you want to know how did they do it, uh, it's basically the equation shown in green here <laughs> is the uh, cheat sheet for the equation of how to make a picture into Spectrum IQ. Well, that's it for now, folks. Thanks for watching.